The Margaretville Arkville Community Station. Your Margaretville Arkville Community Station. Margaretville Arkville Community Station. Channel Your Margaretville Arkville Community Station. Channel
is uh, not just uh, saving Bel Air that we uh, know and love, uh, but uh, bringing it up to the uh, status that uh, we think uh, it should have uh, as the uh, most important facility uh, for uh, downstate skiers uh, from Long Island in the New York region. Now, we've been told uh, that um, the governor has changed his mind about uh, mothballing Bel Air, for which we can thank um, all of the people who um, uh, rallied uh, to its defense, both downstate and in the region. Uh, and um, I think uh, no small uh, effort uh, on the part of Joe Kelly and response by the uh, people that you see up here, the legislators uh, who were concerned. But what we're talking about is um, not only not mothballing it, but um, the governor's proposal to uh, lease it out uh, for uh, private enterprise is also uh, not acceptable. We feel that uh, state parks are a legitimate state purpose, that user fees at these parks uh, have never been more than 40 or 60 percent, and that it would be a very unfortunate uh, precedent uh, to start. Next year we'll be hearing that we should be leasing out Bear Mountain or Jones Beach uh, or some other facility. Uh, and um, aside from the fact I don't want to get into a constitutional a quarrel with the governor because I'm not even Bob Abrams, but uh, I uh, would feel and have been so advised that uh, this uh, would not be um, constitutional. Uh, the person who wrote the original uh, agreement uh, advised me uh, that it is definitely unconstitutional uh, to uh, lease out uh, state lands on which this um, facility uh, is based. So we believe in Bel Air. We believe that it would be a very profitable uh, money maker if the uh, money was uh, put in uh, that has been put into other facilities. Um, some of you may have seen these uh, figures that um, on operational aid, uh, for instance, um, for fiscal year 83-84, uh, Whiteface got three million five hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred. Gore two million eighty-eight thousand. Bel Air only uh, one million four hundred eighty-seven thousand. The um, capital expenditures um, over the last ten years uh, are even uh, more appalling. Uh, Whiteface uh, has had a, a total of. Uh, 15,241,683. We can appreciate the fact that a lot of that went into the Olympics, and we uh, certainly uh, supported that effort wholeheartedly. Uh, but um, in that same period, uh, Bel Air has 2,715,750 uh, thousand. And um, I'm sure uh, there's a committee somewhere that doesn't like you to call them stepchildren, but I would say that this has been a stepchild uh, and has been a neglected facility, and uh, the state has got to, to do better. So I'll stop here. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Joe Kelly uh, to uh, make his presentation and um, uh, first, um, ask Maurice if he'd like to say a few words. Well, Carol, I think you've said it all, and I just want to thank you very much, and the Senator Leichter, Joe Kelly, the Coombe, uh, Senator Cook, all of the people who are here, and all of the others who expressed such great support for the Bel Air facility. As uh, you point out, the Bel, Bel Air is indeed a state park. Uh, we don't expect Jones Beach to make money. We don't expect Bear Mountain to make money. Why should anyone... Uh, expect Bel Air to make money. The fact is, however, that Bel Air has made money, that uh, over the long run, the Bel Air facility has returned more to the state than uh, was put into it in terms of, uh, of investment. And if the investment were more reasonable, more in keeping with what it ought to have been, more in keeping with what uh, was invested in the other uh, state ski centers in the Adirondacks, then in all probability, the return on Bel Air would have been even, even greater. Bel Air is a, uh, uh, the only state-owned ski center in the downstate area. There are 20 million people within a two-and-a-half-hour drive. 
of the, uh, of the Bel Air facility. It is indeed, in every sense of the word and, and phrase, a statewide resource. And uh, those of us who represent the Catskills, Dick and uh, Charlie Cook and myself and others, are uh, just uh, enormously gratified and, and pleased and uh, grateful for this expression of support that we have from our downstate colleagues and uh, <laughs> citizens and especially to uh, Joe Kelly for all of the effort that the, he and his family have put into helping us save this facility. Now that it's clear that Bel Air has been saved, now that it's clear that uh, there never was the intention, on the part of the governor at least, to uh, mothball the facility, and that uh, it was always uh, the governor's intention in spite of this uh, uh, errant language that somehow mysteriously uh, got into the, into the budget, uh, we ha that is not the end of the job, as you point out, uh, Senator Berman. We've got to make sure that the investments that go into the Bel Air facility from now on are in keeping with uh, that as a statewide resource and uh, be sure that it provides the kind of wonderful family recreation that uh, the Kellys and others, uh, many, many others, thousands and thousands of others have enjoyed over the years. And, uh, just very grateful to all of you. Joe? Uh, I have some prepared remarks, but I timed them, and it's only eight minutes, so you don't have to uh, start. I, I, I represent the Coalition to Save Bel Air. I have two other uh, representatives here that are uh, leaders of the Bel Air Coalition, Al Higley and Bob Kniffle, both from the uh, Pine Hill and uh, Boyceville area in the Catskills. Uh, our coalition consists of skiers, community leaders, business leaders, citizens, taxpayers, as well as out-state visitors who have formed together to support additional state funding and expansion of the downstate public ski facility at Bel Air. As you can see by uh, those represented here, this coalition cuts across political and regional ties. It is the downstate area as a whole saying we want our ski area and we want it competitive. We protest its neglect. Rip Van Winkle, another famous resident of the Catskill Mountains has nothing on Bel Air. Bel Air has slept for 10 years and is now waking up to a very distressful situation. Its very existence is threatened. The situation really has two distinct aspects, and hopefully now that its existence is not uh, threatened, as uh, Assemblyman Hinchy has mentioned. But this uh, situation has two distinct aspects. One is recreational and one is economic. From a recreational standpoint, Bel Air is the closest state facility to the largest portion of the state's population. The state, however, has consistently favored the northern areas, Whiteface and Gore, over the southern area of Bel Air. I think we can understand the money spent there before at Whiteface before and during the Olympics, but we cannot understand the huge amount of state funding since the Olympics, particularly when we have seen the complete lack of funding at Bel Air. The state money spent on Gore, while not as extravagant as has been showered on Whiteface, still dwarfs Bel Air's share. The state has spent eight times as much on snowmaking at Gore as it has at Bel Air in the period 1975 to 1983. Last year, for instance, Gore and Whiteface split over $1 million on snowmaking, while Bel Air received a paltry sum of $60,000 for bathrooms. Bel Air's treatment has been atrocious. The state has attempted to make our mountain a molehill. Mole hill. <laughs> this in spite of the fact that Bel Air is the only state-run area within day trip distance of, New York, of the New York metropolitan area, the largest population area in the country. A family of five, my family of five, can day trip from Long Island, for instance, and ski Bel Air for a cost of approximately $85, including gas. The other state-run areas grow on white face I don't want to get into figures, but it would cost considerably more and would necessitate an overnight stay. We are not against the development of Gore and Whiteface, but we do not want it at the expense of our facility at Bel Air. Which brings us to the next aspect. Whether by actually closing or benign neglect, the demise of Bel Air would be a disaster to an already economically depressed area. The family median of the immediate geographical area is almost 40% below the statewide average. The mountain itself is the linchpin of the winter economy in the area, 
It provides jobs both at the mountain itself and the winter tourist and the winter tourism industry surrounding it. Bel Air has to thrive for the area to compete. The state has not provided the tools to compete. The cost of this facility closing would be tens of millions of dollars. Now, years of neglect and decline have been compounded by the dreaded words of mothballing and closing, even if they were by mistake. Bel Air has to be rejuvenated and a long-range plan has to be developed. The area in the past two years has shown some signs of emergence from a long period of economic stagnation. The current situation surrounding Bel Air has blunted it. It must be reversed. I quote you from a local paper. This is quote. Bel Air's loss would be a whole lifetime, not just as economics go, but as the pride of all the Catskill Mountain Ranges people go. Ulster, Delaware, and Greene County, end quote. I have to liken it to another tragic event of my lifetime, and I am sure of that of Governor Mario Cuomo's. When the Dodgers left Brooklyn in 1957, <laughs> it hurt bad. And I, believe me, I hurt, not only from an economic point of view, but to a whole region's pride. I travel a lot, and it still hurts me, to go by Dodgers Stadium and Chavez Ravine in Los Angeles. That situation, however, we couldn't do anything about. This one we can. So our conclusions for our coalition are that snowmaking, trail development, and marketing make a ski area. Bel Air has been lacking in all three in a highly competitive market. Number two, the state monies provided for state-run ski areas have been siphoned off to the North Country away from the state's major population area. Bel Air's location, number three, is ideal, provided once again the tools are supplied to let it compete. Four, the antiquation of the area has been caused by deferred maintenance and lack of capital funding. The state has let its investment become run down. Funding can save it and bring it back. Our recommendations are one, we endorse a program to continue funding in the current manner, but at increased levels. The area has to remain open. Mothballing can't be an option before or since it's been said it's a mistake. B, the state should appropriate funding to put the facility on a par with the other ski areas, whether it's the northern areas or the areas surround it. You can't compete with 24% snowmaking. After this is done, then we will consider the operations as to how we're going to operate Bel Air. We also propose for the people from the area that a permanent watchdog committee be formed consisting of the various interest groups that make up the Bel Air community. This committee will be charged with keeping tabs on all the factors impacting the welfare of an extremely valuable facility. Now we have nearly 10,000 New York State resident signatures here. This is a lot of paper and a lot of effort by a lot of people. Now, we have approximately 10,000 now. These signatures are from all over the downstate area. For instance, East 22nd Street, New York. This is just from page one, so I'm not picking it out. East 22nd Street, New York, Forest Hills, Forest Hills, New Rochelle, Brooklyn, Nanuet, Bayside. I know there's one from East Rockaway, Carolina. <laughs> I showed you that before. And we have not asked the people who are, who are from out of state. When you talk about I love New York and we're giving all this money for tourism, we have tourists coming to the Bel Air area that are going to, you know, maybe they'll go to the Hunter area, maybe they'll go to Wyndham, maybe they'll go to Gore, but maybe they're going to go to New Jersey, maybe they're going to go to Pennsylvania, maybe they're going to go to Massachusetts. So we, are, we have 10,000 of these to present to Carol Berman to present to Governor Cuomo. And I'm going to present these to you, all of them. And we're going to have more because on February 16th, Assemblyman Hinchy is bringing a group to Bel Air to have a hearing that we'd like as many people from the area or the downstate area to be at. But what the, what the uh, petition says, the 10,000 people which we consider part of our coalition, we, the undersigned New York State taxpayers, respectfully request that the inordinately large amount of New York State winter recreation monies be imported into the White Face Mountain and the Olympic Regional Development Authority be redirected to the downstate area at Bel Air. Bel Air has become, 
if I can use the word stepchild, of the three state-funded ski areas with the narrower snowmaking coverage. Now, the snow current snowmaking coverage at the uh, state-run areas are Whiteface, 83%, Gore, 55%, and Bel Air, again, 24%. Also, we've had no trail development. It is also the closest man to the majority of New York State taxpaying population. And we, the downstate skiers and taxpayers, demand that this facility be made competitive. Bring Bel Air back. Thank you. Okay. Well, we have, uh, uh, we have, we'll give we these recommendations to Maurice, okay. and uh, we are going to uh, see that they get to the governor uh, today. Yep. And uh, we'll get to the other uh, 5,000. And looking this over, I see also Lynbrook and Baldwin and a lot of my constituents uh, oh, there. there. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so uh, uh, we, uh, we're delighted. And of course, you've got a few other Rockville Center people on there, well, too. Carol, I, think, I, wanted, I wanted to clear up something. Uh, we've, we have done an investigation of the, the things that Joe Kelly talked about, the allocation of resources to the Adirondacks and away from uh, Catskills to the two Adirondack ski centers, an extensive investigation, and we've traced it back to three moles in, on the second in the division of the budget that live in uh, Clifton Park and Colony <laughs> and who ski at uh, Whiteface and Gore. That's what I thought. Now that, uh, now that they're aware of the fact that there is a third ski center in, uh, in New York and they have been properly chastised by the governor, I expect that uh, we'll see a rectification of this situation. The, uh, immediate future. I think there's one other thing that I showed to Carol when I came up here is that uh, my village, Rockville Center, uh, we have a bus trip from our recreation area coming up to guess where, Bel Air on February 21st. Now uh, that's where the constituents are and, and uh, Mayor Donald Brown, who's the mayor of Rockville Center, along those lines has written Governor Mario Cuomo and sent a, a copy of that right. letter to uh, Senator Berman. But there is an area that, uh, you know, where, where our cons uh, Carol's constituents from her area and from my village use Bel Air and utilize it well. Right. We were joined before by Senator Franz Leichter, who had to leave, but uh, he's also a great uh, supporter of our uh, downstate uh, coalition. Did any of the press have any Dick questions? Carol, oh, oh Dick, I'm yeah, sorry, Dick, go ahead. The irony of this whole cut was the following. The Mid-Hudson region is the growth region of the state of New York. And it's very uh, fitting and proper. There's a coalition now among the people within downstate right out onto the island to appreciate this rebirth that's occurring. Mm -hmm. Bel Air is right in the midst of it because we have four beautiful seasons up there. And I think it will be a step in the right direction for the state of New York if we expand the facilities at Bel Air. Because as Bel Air goes, so goes the winter season in that area. So I thank you very much for including us in the efforts of Joe and Carol and especially Maurice. Mm -hmm. Yes use one of the governor's favorite expressions, how much money do you want and where is it going to come from? <laughs> Joe, you want well, we want enough money to uh, increase the snowmaking capacity at, at Bel Air uh, to close to 100 percent. And I think that that is not, uh, not unreasonable. And we don't expect it to happen overnight. We don't expect that this is going to happen in, uh, in one year. But uh, we expect that the snowmaking capacity at, at Bel Air should be brought up to 100 percent, that uh, the trails should be improved, that uh, the Bel Air facility is, in addition to being an excellent place to go skiing, not only downhill and, and, but, but cross country, there are also uh, other possibilities there. There is in existence a five-year plan for, for the uh, expansion of the Bel Air facility into a year-round uh, recreational facility. And uh, we... Uh, will be working toward that objective to, I have uh, to get the funds that will that will make Bel Air into a, a truly regional uh, facility so that uh, people can ski there all year round and that, that place can be not just uh, put on ice during the summer, but it can be used uh, during that part of the year also. I have, I have just to, to continue that, uh, if we want to talk figures, the figures speak for themselves. This year, the proposed budget for 1984, which is Mario Cuomo's proposed budget, $3,532,000 is going to the Olympic Regional Development Authority in Whiteface. There's a proposal, now this is just the capital budget, of $2,200,000 going to Gore for a triple chairlift and also a campground. So we, as Bel Air, 
Bel Air, by the way, is getting hundred thousand dollars for closing costs. That was in the budget. So what we say is, yes, the money is there. The money is being utilized. The money is being spent. The only thing is, it's not being spent at Bel Air. Yeah, I think the money can come from the same place that the uh, money has right. come for Gore and Whiteface, and I think that uh, it's, it's state purposes uh, money. As far as uh, Whiteface is concerned, too, uh, I think um, there is a corporation there that uh, gets the money back, whereas the money that uh, is expended for uh, Bel Air or Gore will come back uh, to the taxpayer. It's like tourism uh, dollars that are spent uh, in any other way in, in this state. Uh, for every one dollar that's spent, you're getting back three and four dollars. So it's not that uh, you've got to worry about where is the money coming from. What you put in, you're going to get back three and four times. That's exactly right. I mean, if you've ever been up in the, uh, in the Bel Air area, and, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, the family media income is 40 percent below that of New York State average. I think you'll see that some money well spent in New York in, uh, in the Bel Air area, for instance, if there was a chairlift going down into the village of Pine Hill, which is, has uh, had some very severe difficulties over the past years with the ending of the uh, white clapboard hotels in those areas, that here's a chance to bring back the, tourist, the tourism that that uh, was in that region 30, 40, even 100 years ago. I mean, the, the history of the area is, is, uh, is unbelievable. It's, you know, it's not only Rip Van Winkle, but it's the Grand Hotel, it's the Catskill Mountain House. This goes back all. So if, if the state does invest money in that area, I think the state will get money back from that area. How many new trails can you cut there without running into the cons another constitutional problem? Uh, we have three and a half miles more of trails. The Constitution says there's 20 miles of trail allowed. There's 16 and a half right at this moment. So if you if you opened up the bowl, for instance, on the right of Bel Air, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's already a, a trail over there that's not utilized, and that's Cathedral Brook. So you have three and a half miles more of, of uh, trail making capability there without without violating anything of the Constitution, which was 1947, so we'd still be living within the rules. You can have skiers going right down into Pine Hill. Uh, there's no reason why there can't be a, a gondola, perhaps, uh, going from that uh, area up to, the, up to the mountain. There are a lot of things that can be done there within the, the constructs of the existing situation to, uh, to make that facility a really excellent facility and to have uh, the kind of economic impact on that community that it ought to. Bel Air and, uh, and Pine Hill are just inextricably connected, and the fate of two, the fate of the two of them, are just uh, in, intertwined together. And uh, we want to see that little community of uh, Pine Hill prosper, and Bel Air can be the vehicle for doing that. Do you have a budget estimate of what it would cost to do everything? There three is three and a half miles of extra trail, uh, additional chairlifts, that sort of. Well, there's a, there's a uh, five-year plan, which we can give you after it, that goes into what uh, Bel Air has, has proposed and what they've gotten. And boy, it's sad reading, because uh, I'm, I'm not, maybe uh, somebody can fill us in on what's been proposed and what's been allocated. I don't know if there's anybody who here can do it or anybody who has an ability to do it, but we can get you those figures. We have the figures here, and we can get you the figures that that is being cost, but I know, you know, it's, uh, you know, when, when nobody's been consulted in the area for the longest time about what to do, how to do it, it's hard to come up with, oh, we have a plan, but the plan takes time, you know, you don't just throw money at something and hope it comes, it takes time to plan this thing. This is originally why we were so much against the idea of getting a, a private operator by April 1st, but I think by planning both uh, within the community, within the state, and whatever else it takes, we can plan within reasonable sums to, uh, well here for instance, go this year, the triple chairlift is a million six hundred thousand dollars. That's what some of the things cost. So maybe in the bowl it's a million six hundred thousand dollars. And we maintain that if you, if you amortize these figures and you take the state's borrowing costs, which they don't pay for right away, they pay for this money, you know, over 20 or 30 years, that if you take that and you measure that against the, uh, the economic uplift it's going to give to an entire area, and particularly a town that might cost the money more, the state more than, than it receives right now. Yes, sorry. 
referred to the fact that Bel Air has been the step, a stepchild of the three state owned facilities for the past 10 years. Has there been any, any organized protest in, the, in that 10 year demise? Uh, this yeah. is the first one that I know, but I don't know. This, if is, the first, this is the first time organized. there's been an organized protest uh, from people anywhere <coughs> outside of the, uh, the region. Uh, the senator who represents that area and myself have been uh, fighting a lonely battle to try to get appropriate appropriations for uh, the, Be the Bel Air facility. And uh, we always thought that there was a strong constituency for this cause outside of uh, the Catskills, but we never dreamed that it would produce this kind of uh, evidence in so short a period of time. And now that it's been so clearly demonstrated as a result of Joe Kelly's efforts and, and others, it will be clear even to the most obtuse person in the division of the budget that uh, there is a need for this <laughs> facility to be funded appropriately. What is the, the main uh, problem with having a private investment? Why is that so undesirable? Look, there are constitutional restrictions which I believe would make it uh, impossible for a private operator to operate that facility. You don't think it could be viewed as a concessionaire? I don't think, I think that uh, Article 14 of the Constitution prohibits the commercial exploitation of the forest preserve. And this uh, facility was created as a state park, and that's precisely what it is. It's a state park, and uh, it ought to be that way, and the state ought to fund it properly so that people can enjoy it uh, as a state park. Right, and I think that uh, basically uh, this is, is uh, really uh, one of the most important purposes uh, for government parks and recreation, and it would be uh, setting a very uh, undesirable uh, precedent, as I said in my opening uh, remarks. I wouldn't want every uh, state park to be put up on a rack and let's see how much money we're getting from it. And if we're not getting from it, let's uh, get a, a, a chunk of it uh, off to the highest bidder. Uh, that is not what government uh, is uh, supposed to be about. And, uh, That's the James Watt theory yeah. of uh, parks and recreation, <laughs> right. and uh, that is not, not to New York. Uh, not what we are about here, and we're not going to see that uh, happen. Yes. Senator Berman, uh, given the state's history of somewhat less than full optimization of the resource, what or, or institutional arrangement do you see as managing Bel Air in the future? Well, I, I think uh, the state could do a good job uh, if uh, the money is put into it. I think that uh, it would not be a particularly uh, difficult facility to, to manage. And I think that uh, it's a question of getting the snow making equipment, getting the trails, getting the things that we've talked about here. And I think the, the management of the facility has not been uh, a problem at all. That is not why it's not been a money maker. It's not been a money maker. Uh, because it hasn't uh, had the wherewithal uh, uh, financially. I think uh, the state could do the job, uh, and I see uh, no problem whatsoever. Uh, and you don't see Orta as having a role in the future of uh, Well, it could, uh, be. It could, it could be, be, yes. Not closing the door on anything. I think that there's a possibility yeah. for uh, any kind of reasonable institutional arrangement. So, it's in so, so long as we can be assured this facility is going to get the attention that it deserves. And we'd probably want some rep representation that, uh, you know, we wouldn't, I, I think there might be some objection to uh, order running running Bel Air without, you know, it's like taxation without representation. We'd like some uh, representation on the board. Definitely. Yeah, the local. Have you spoken with the governor since uh, he admitted his mistake last week? Well, the governor, let's be clear about that. The governor has not admitted a mistake. The governor, uh, I believe the AP quoted it as a, as a mistake. Well, I don't want to speak for the governor, but I'm happy with the explanation that they provide because the explanation that they provide tells me that not only do they not want to get rid of Bel Air or close it down now, but that never entered their mind in a real sense. And so uh, we, want to take, we want to take comfort in that. We want to take comfort in the, in the thought that uh, no one... Uh, Ever, no responsible person, at least. There are some I irresponsible have, people. Have you ever thought about who are they kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes or if it they overlook something like that, 
<laughs> sometimes it's adversity is the question. sometimes adversity is the mother to invention. And at this particular time, I think the important thing is we're moving on from the question of saving Bel Air to the question of a long-term commitment to improving Bel Air. That makes so much uh, much sense to be a common integral part of our particular regional economy and indeed the economy of the state of New York because outdoor recreation is so compatible with the Catskill Forest Preserve. It just makes imminent sense for this investment by the state. What about raising lift tickets and or dedicating the, the ticket revenues to Bel Air? Skiers can speak to that. Uh, the question was? What would, how would you feel about increasing the lift ticket price and using that dedicating the revenues from that to the operation of Bel Air. Well, you know, the thing about lift tickets, I've always been suspicious that Bel Air didn't raise their lift ticket price this year, because it's the first time I can remember that they didn't. So I think that, that we can, uh, I think we can live with a uh, fair amount of uh, charge for what the, the services are provided, just like any other state operation. And uh, so we can live with that. As far as the money going back, I would like to see Bel Air exist somewhat by itself, provided the tools are provided. You can't have it exist by itself the way it's constituted right now, because when you have a year like we had last year, when there was, uh, you know, it, it uh, rained, then got cold, and then uh, got warm and rained, and then got cold again, so it was an impossible year. And unless you had a, a big snowmaking capacity, it was very, very difficult to keep any snow on the mountain. And when you, when the state asked, asked Bel Air to compete for the ski a dollar, which is what we're talking about here, and uh, when the competition is, you know, the state, I think the average in New York State is about 83% snowmaking, it's hard to compete. So what we ask is give us the tools. Bring Bel Air, make it competitive, make, put the snowmaking in. We don't want 100% snowmaking. We'll go for a 75% snowmaking and live with that and then compete, and then I think Bel Air would be glad to compete. Yes. Did I understand before that you mentioned that the monies are not being reused at Bel Air? In other words, the monies the facility makes are not going back to be reused at that same facility but goes to the state. So what would the difference be if you raise the lift tickets, uh, the increased money would go back to the state again, and the state would use it at Gore Mountain, White Face, or any place else? I, I didn't see where, the, where this comes in, uh, where this makes any difference now. Whether they get $20 for a risk ticket, if it doesn't well, go Well, that's what she was talking about, now. dedicating yeah. the money for use right. uh, in right. the Bel Air facility. Mm -hmm. I'm not raising the yeah, cost of the tickets. Several yes. comments. Yeah. Apparently, when it comes to building a state facility, which has little or no productive value out of marble, there's no problem in finding the money. But when it comes to finding money for Bel Air, there is a big problem. Two, everyone seems to hide behind the state constitution by the Victorian maiden behind layers of petticoats. Now, in theory, this can be amended in any way that the people of New York desire. So I don't, I don't see that as a legitimate argument in terms of uh, alternate kinds of uh, running of the facility. Well, the state constitution can be amended, that's true, but uh, the writers of the constitution put in there a, a process for amending it. And it is not something that you can do overnight. Correct. It takes two uh, consecutive sessions of the legislature with an intervening election and then a general referendum by the people of the state. It's just since nobody mentioned it, I want to make everyone aware that it's not fixed in grass. Bob uh, Kniffel, I think like you would say something. Last year when Bel Air had just two or three trails open, because of lack of snowmaking, we had an occupancy rate of maybe 65% in the hotel. This year with the natural snow, we've been filled every weekend since Christmas. So I can just show you how much where people would get up if you had the, the, the snow. Yeah, Bob runs the Pine Hill Arms in Pine Hill, biggest hotel in Pine Hill. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But, you know, we have the uh, the natural weather going yes. with us most of the time in the area. It is a, a skiing area. And uh, Hunter Mountain and others, which have the snow making equipment, are you know, doing fine. Yeah, there was somebody over There's there. something I'd like to point out. I read just a few days back. That which does not grow dice. I only read a couple of days back. I don't remember where it was. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason why they cannot invest more money. You have to invest money to make money. There's no sense of what's a dollar, especially in this modern day and age. 
There's no sense in going back to Ruth Van Winkle. Forget about it. Well, uh, let's worry about tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, based on that, we must invest money. And we have to see to it that the money is invested. And there's another factor. Would it be possible to have, uh, well, let's see, whether the governor appoints somebody, a businessman who knows what he's doing, to run Bel Air, but we have to have a first-class businessman. It's only a businessman who really knows how to make money. Thank I'd like you. To interject on that, Mr. Berman, if you might. Al Higley, you can't have the job. First-class <laughs> 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 businessman. <laughs> I feel that you have a good businessman running Bel Air. The state, the, reach, the, the state reached out and grabbed John Johnson from. As I said before, from the mountains of Tennessee, if you can run a uh, ski slope in Tennessee, you can run a ski slope in <laughs> John Johnson is a good businessman. He's concerned about the community of Pine Hill, concerned about the community of Fleshman's and the community that surrounds the ski area. The management in Bel Air is not the problem, as they, uh, Carol Burma <laughs> stated prior. The, manage the problem with Bel Air is the state of New York. Nobody else. We, as Joe Kelly mentioned earlier, we're going to have a hearing. The Environmental Conservation Committee has scheduled a hearing for the 16th of uh, February at the Bel Air facility. So anyone who would like to come and raise the issues that have been raised here in the last couple of minutes at that hearing is welcome to do so. Um, and we have a copy of the comments right. here if anybody would like to ask. Uh, of course, I'm going to ask you and uh, Dick Holmes the same question. With regard to a long, a long range program outlining the development of the community, say Pine Hill, Fleshman's, and parts of Delaware and Ulster County, how long do you think do you think would take to put in a program like that together, in our, a long range plan? For Bel Air? Well, not yeah. Bel Air, Highmount, the uh, uh, Fleshlands, uh, the surrounding community. I mean, the development of the communities around the Bel Air ski system. Well, it could be done in 15 minutes, or it could no. be done in a, <laughs> no, no. Or it could take a little bit longer. No, I mean, you know, it would. I'm talking about. Depends on what you want to do and uh, what your objectives are, uh, what your expectations are. Maurice, let me ask a you a related question, if I may. That you question just gives rise, in my mind, to a lot of other questions. Yeah. You, you mentioned that there was a five-year plan somewhere along the line that had been considered at one point in time. I'm, I'm wondering, of course, if the governor's office has made this uh, mistake and error of uh, having zip in the budget for this year, I'm wondering what shelf that five-year plan is laying on right now, and is it at all possible that with the attention the coalition has brought to Bel Air, that that plan may be dusted off and brought back up to some upper shelf and looked at again? Yes, indeed. Right. Thank you yes. all for coming. And uh, this is only the uh, the first shot. We're going to continue until the war is won. Okay, very good. Thank you, Grace. We'll give these to you. That's, yeah, I think about six or eight weeks ago. It was originally the focus of attention, that the focus of attention would be allegation of uh, certain activities that had occurred at the Bel Air facility that were inappropriate or perhaps unlawful. And they included allegations with regard to the cutting of uh, timber within the forest preserve and uh, other activities at this facility to which our attention and the attention of the department had been called to. Since then, however, the governor submitted his budget recommendations to the state legislature, budget recommendations for the upcoming fiscal year, fiscal year 1984-85, and those budget recommendations contained language which led us to believe that the governor had intended to close the Bel Air facility. And so the focus of attention of this hearing shifted somewhat to include the long-term maintenance and operation of Bel Air and we have also scheduled another hearing for March 1st with regard to the long-term maintenance and operation of the other state-owned ski facility in New York, the Gore facility in the Adirondacks. Since, those, uh, since the uh, budget was made, made public, the governor has said that it was never his intention to close the Bel Air facility and that uh, arrangements would be made to uh, keep this facility open. Nevertheless, we are concerned with the long-term maintenance and operation of Bel Air. We are concerned with the fact that this uh, facility has not received its fair share of appropriations, recreational appropriations for the state-owned ski centers. 
that uh, much of the money that has been appropriated for that purpose over the course of the last several years has gone to the Adirondacks, particularly to Whiteface. Now that is understandable, at least to some extent, because the Olympics, after all, were held at, uh, at Whiteface and it was necessary for the state to make a major investment in that facility in order to accommodate the, the Olympics. But that does not account for the fact that additional funding has gone on to, uh, to that facility after the end of the, uh, the Olympic Games in 1980. And so we, we are concerned and uh, we are interested in assuring that Bel Air in, a, in, in the future be stable and secure, that uh, this facility be upgraded, that it receive appropriations for such uh, worthwhile expenditures as additional snowmaking equipment. Bel Air now has the capacity to cover only a little less than, than uh, one fourth of its slopes with, with artificial snow. And in order to compete in the uh, snowmaking, in the skiing business uh, these days, we're going to need additional snowmaking capacity here and some additional investment as well. So it is toward those particular points that we will be focusing attention today and to which the witnesses who are coming before this committee will also focus their attention. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce the other members of the, of the panel. On my immediate, immediate left is Member of Assembly Richard Kuhn, who represents a district principally in, in uh, Delaware County. Mm -hmm. Dick? Thank you, Maurice. Nice to have you with us. Thank you very much. Uh, one of our concerns, and I would include Maurice in this, is the fact that we recognize that outdoor recreational facilities are compatible with regional economic development, and along with that, our concern about the environment and the Catskill Preserve. We feel these are integral, intricately uh, uh, connected, and so we're here to listen to your concerns about Bel Air. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Dick. On my right is Wally John, who is the staff director of the Assembly Environmental Conservation Committee. And uh, on his right is Larry Schillinger from the staff of the Speaker of the State Assembly. The first witness is Mr. Nicholas Robinson, General Counsel, Department of Environmental Conservation. Chairman Henchi, panel members, and honored guests that are here today. My name is Bob Monroe, and I'm the Assistant Superintendent of the Bel Air Mountain. I want to thank you all for your concern. You're, you're all obviously here at the Ski Center. I wish to commend on this future. The economic importance of Bel Air to the community is staggering. The Ulster County Chamber of Commerce is estimating community impact in the range of $10 million annually. While this may be the estimated impact, it covers not only Ulster County, but also Delaware County, and does not indicate the potential impact. Nationwide, the National Ski Areas Association, the NSAA, uses figures much higher. According to NSAA, for every dollar spent on ski lift tickets, $35 is left in the community area. Even in a poor snow year, this would result in potential impact in excess of $25 million annually. Above and beyond the usual gasoline, motel, and food expenses we expect is the secondary home market and the related services which are needed. Second homeowners who purchase ski homes spend dollars for heat, maintenance, taxes, groceries, and a host of other services. It's only when we look at these hidden potentials we start to perceive Bel Air's impact on the area around us. Bel Air does not feel, nor do the majority of ski areas around us feel, that we are in competition with each other. Rather, we take the stand and we complement each other. However, Bel Air's continued failure to keep pace with modern times can be a disaster, not only to the ski center, but in the community <coughs> surrounding us as well. Fifty years ago, a rope tow was looked upon as a great innovation by the ski industry. By today's standards, it is obsolete. Snowmaking by today's standards is one of the most important basic links in the ski industry. By today's standards, the 24% total terrain coverage of Bel Air is obsolete. I say this when noting the areas around us have an average over 75% terrain coverage and are continuing to increase. 
Bel Air has survived in the demanding times we're in. It is absolutely essential that allocations of capital expenditures above and beyond normal operating costs be made available to this operation. Fulfillment of the five-year master plan started in 1979 and only partly finished is essential. This would allow for snowmaking expansion, parking lot enlargement, additional lot space, and increased uphill capacity. The cost of operation of the ski center basically remains fixed whether you operate at 25% or 100% capacity. Yearly maintenance, upkeep, and operation of a chairlift is the same whether you have 500 skiers or 3,000. Ski patrol must open and close trails. Trails must be groomed every day. Snow must be made. It's very evident when Bel Air has 25 slopes and trails open with adequate natural snow bases, all weekends and holidays bring full parking lots. When natural snow covered trails are closed, revenue can be expected to drop by 50% or more. This can be, be seen by the comparison of income to trails open and attached in the appendix. This in itself shows that 100% snowmaking uh, could do what 100% snowmaking could do for the area. But that Bel Air's potentials remain dormant. Over the decades, midweek use has only been a fraction of its capability. Increased funds should be made available to market and attract midweek use. The basics are here the trails, the lifts, the lodge, parking lots, and perhaps most important of all, a knowledgeable, professional, and dedicated staff. Certainly the potential for this ski area and for the community has never been touched. The Ulster and Delaware Railroad is at our doorstep. The Catskill Mountain Railroad is also on track. The potential for these two railroads from different directions meeting on our doorstep in High Mount is very real in the near future. Joint effort with the creation of a short shuttle to our boundary would create this unique situation of allowing passengers to then ride a chairlift to the summit of the mountain. The potential impact of such a joint effort and the attendance increase in Torum is overwhelming. Feasibility studies should be initiated for a water slide in the novice area. Our cross-country complex has hardly been touched. Everywhere we look, we see potential, all of which could be accomplished within the constitutional limitations placed on this forest preserved ski center. There can be no doubt that the continued operation and growth of Bel Air is vital to the interests of the people of New York State and to the economic health of the communities surrounding Bel Air Mountain. I thank you, and as we say in the soaps, thank you for skiing Bel Air. You've been uh, the assistant superintendent here at Bel Air for how many years now? I've been here about 14 years. About 14, four, 14 right. years. I assume that you're intimately familiar with these allegations and with the activities that led to them. Yes, I am. Would you please tell the committee in your own words just exactly what occurred insofar as those, uh, the activities that gave rise to those allegations are concerned? There was, uh, yes, indeed, there were uh, trees cut at Bel Air. Uh, the, uh, timber that was cut from the trees, or the trees, uh, was used on uh, uh, building material for the ski center, and signs and fences and such. Uh, as was stated, the total number of footage uh, that could be expected was found at these uh, buildings. The management at Bel Air did not act until they had an okay from Albany. It was never in the intent of Bel Air to do anything under the table and without Albany's uh, prior notice. Could I interrupt you? Right. There, please. When you say that the management of Bel Air did not act without an okay from Albany, they did not act with regard to the cutting of that timber with, without the okay from Albany? That decision came from John Johnson, or through John Johnson to Albany. Uh, John got all of his direction from the Albany office. Who was it in the Albany office that directed him to cut the timber? That I really can't tell you. It's the, I was not there when any decisions were made. I know that uh, originally Vic Leiter was in the office at that time. And 
I would have to say that uh, the original decision to cut was while the glider was in office. Okay, please proceed. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I, inter uh, I interrupted you to ask that question. Oh, okay. You no, I, well, that's mine right there. Uh, the other allegations that were uh, made uh, uh, not concerning timber have been investigated. Uh, I feel that uh, it was very unsighted and very unfair. Pardon uh, me, Bob? I, I didn't follow you on that. Excuse me? You said something was very one-sided and very unfair? I feel, uh, and the staff management Bel Air feel, it was very one-sided and unfair. The statements that were made, uh, nobody stood up for Bel Air. And until we had an investigation, and uh, countless people were uh, talked to, I think it Charlie Sullivan, who works under Nick Robinson, I believe that he talked to at least 50 different people, personnel at Bel Air. He spent a great amount of time. He came uh, on a Tuesday, and I think he planned to go home Tuesday night. He stayed Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. He spent many hours, as much as three and four hours and five hours with some people. Uh, I think that Charlie Sullivan did a very thorough examination of all the allegations that were made, whether it was timber or anything else, it was misuse of, of anything. Charlie Sullivan, I feel, uh, did a superb job of investigating it. He certainly spent considerably more time than you would expect he would. He, uh, and on that basis, I feel that he did a very uh, adequate job. I have not talked to Charlie Sullivan, and I have not talked to Nick Robinson. Uh, it's our understanding the investigation is still underway, and we have not received any notice in any way from them uh, since they were here. Begin with, uh, in regard to the timber cutting, the first investigation was under Commissioner Flax, I believe. Uh, Flax had investigated and signed off. Then it was brought up by Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Williams also investigated it in the spring when there were additional allegations made against Bel Air and its management and staff uh, in late fall of, of 83. Uh, a further investigation was taken on at that time. I, uh, I feel very confident that, that uh, we did nothing wrong at Bel Air as far as being dishonest. Uh, let's say the intention of management at Bel Air was not to infringe on any state's rights. I think it was an interpretation of the constitutional amendment. I am very firm in that belief that it was a misunderstanding, if you can say that, and the Albany, at, based at the Albany level. Someone in the, someone in the Albany office misunderstood uh, the provisions of Article 14 of the Constitution? I was not there recent time, but I do know that I heard and spoken about that you could take three or four lawyers and you could sit them down and you could have them give their interpretation of that ruling and they'll come up with a different reading or understanding. Someone, someone expressed that attitude to you? No, that is what I have heard since then. The, uh, because at the time, we at Bel Air had no reason to feel that that uh, we we're infringing on um, state forest preserves and, and this cutting of the act that had been accused on us. Uh, it was certainly not the intent of the people here that they were doing something uh, not right, mm -hmm. but something they could do. Right. So the people here at the facility had the, had, had the idea that since they had, they had gotten the approval of the Albany office, uh, what they were doing, the cutting of that timber, for use at this facility was something that was perfectly all right. That's correct. As I say, all the timber that was cut went back into the facility. The first major work that we did was the enclosure of the porch <coughs> at the upper lodge. That porch is 175 feet long, give or take. Uh, we probably have uh, as many as uh, 15 to 16 picnic tables in that area. Uh, we have lockers in that area. The total cost, uh, I believe, uh, to Bel Air was approximately $10,000, which included the heat 
electricity and such. Uh, let's say all the material went back into Bel Air. There was no intent of anybody doing anything wrongfully or willingly wrongfully. The, uh, uh, that's, all, that's all I can say that reason. Okay, you understand we have to be concerned about this for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that there were uh, repeated stories in the, in the press, not only locally here, but in other places in the state mm -hmm. with regard to these allegations. Uh, there were a number of, uh, well, I'm sure you saw many of them, at least the mm -hmm. ones. I've been well aware of them, in yes. In this particular area, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure you have been. Could you, could you describe the, uh, you know, just what happened? Uh, this is a clipping from the New York Times today. I'll go into that, too. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I represent the Coalition to Save Bel Air. We consist of skiers, community leaders, business leaders, citizens, taxpayers, as well as out-of-state visitors. We have formed, who have formed together to support additional state funding and expansion of the downstate public ski facility at Bel Air. This coalition cuts across political and regional ties. It is the downstate area as a whole saying, we want our ski area, and we want it made competitive. We protest its neglect. Rip Van Winkle, another famous resident of the Catskill Mountains, has nothing on Bel Air. Bel Air has slept for 10 years, and now is waking up to a very distressful situation. Its very existence is threatened. The situation really has two distinct aspects. One is recreational and one is economic. From a recreational standpoint, Bel Air is the closest state facility to the largest portion of the state's population. The state, however, has consistently favored the northern area. Whiteface is the darling of state funding. I think we can understand the money spent there before and during the Olympics, but cannot understand the huge amount of state funding since the Olympics particularly when we have seen the, lack, the complete lack of funding at Bel Air. The state money spent on Gore, while not as extravagant as has been showered on Whiteface, still dwarfs Bel Air's share. The state has spent eight times as much on snowmaking at Gore as it has at Bel Air in the period of 1975 to 1983. Last year, for instance, Gore and Whiteface split over $1 million on snowmaking, while Bel Air received $60,000 for bathrooms. <laughs> Bel Air's treatment has been atrocious. The state has attempted to make our mountain a molehill. This, in spite of the fact that Bel Air is the only state-run area within day trip distance of the New York metropolitan area, the largest population area in the country. A family of five can day trip from Long Island, for instance, and ski Bel Air for a cost of approximately $85, including gas. A trip for the same family to Gore or Whiteface necessitates overnight lodging, adding as much as $200 to the cost of the, of the outing. We are not against the development of Gore or Whiteface, but we do not want it at the expense of the downstate facility at Bel Air. Bel Air is not jet set. It's the mountain of the middle class. Many of these people can't afford to ski anymore. This mountain still gives them this opportunity. Which brings us to the next aspect. Whether by actually closing or by benign neglect, the demise of Bel Air would be a disaster to an already economically depressed area. The family median income of the immediate geographical area is almost 40% below the statewide average. The mountain, is the linchpin of the winter economy in the area. It provides jobs both at the mountain itself and the winter tourism industry surrounding it. Bel Air has to thrive for the area to compete. The state has not provided the tools to compete. The cost of this facility closing would be in the tens of millions of dollars. Years of neglect and decline have been compounded by the dreaded words of mothballing and closing even if they were by mistake. Bel Air has to be rejuvenated. 
and a long-range a long -range plan has to be developed. The area in the past two years has shown some signs of emergence from a long period of economic stagnation. The current situation surrounding Bel Air has blunted it. It must be reversed. I quote you from a local paper. Bel Air's loss would be a whole lifetime, not just as economics go, but as the pride of all the Catskill Mountain Ranges people go, <coughs> Ulster, Delaware, and Green County. I have to liken it to another tragic event of my lifetime, and I am sure that of Governor Mario Cuomo's. When the Dodgers left Brooklyn in 1957, it hurt bad, not only from an economic point of view, but to a whole region's pride. I travel a lot, and it still hurts me to go by Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. That situation we could do nothing about. This one, we can. Our conclusions are, one, snowmaking, trail development, and marketing make a ski area. Bel Air has been lacking in all three in a highly competitive market. Two, the state monies provided for the state-run ski areas have been siphoned off to the North Country, away from the state's major population area. Three, Bel Air's location is ideal, provided the tools are supplied to let it compete. The antiquation of the area has been caused by deferred maintenance and lack of capital funding. The state has let its investment become run down. Funding can save it and bring it back. Our recommendations are, one, we endorse a program to continue funding in the current manner, but at increased levels. A, the area must remain open. Mothballing is not an option. It's a cop-out. B, the state should appropriate funding to put the facility on a par with other ski areas. C, then, and only then, will we consider the options. Two, we propose that a permanent watchdog committee be formed, consisting of the various interest groups that make up Bel Air. This committee will be charged with keeping tabs on all factors impacting the welfare of the extremely valuable facility. 10,000 paying state 10,000 tax-paying New Yorkers have sat on a petition presented to Governor Cuomo. We, the undersigned New York State taxpayers, respectfully request that the inordinately large amount of New York State winter recreation monies being poured into Whiteface Mountain and the Olympic Regional Development Authority be redirected to the downstate area at Bel Air. Bel Air has become the stepchild of the three state-funded ski areas with the narrowest snowmaking coverage of all. Whiteface has 83%, Gore 55%, Bel Air only 24%, and no trail development. It is also the closest mountain to the majority of the New York State taxpaying population. And we, the downstate skiers and taxpayers, demand that this facility be made competitive. Bring Bel Air back. We have a series of general proposals for the development of the mountain. One. Snowmaking improvements, as outlined in the Bel Air Mountain five-year plan, should be completed as soon as possible. A copy of this out updated plan is attached for your convenience. Two, expansion of the base lodge, also as outlined in the five-year plan, should proceed without delay. Three, when the preceding basic improvements have taken place, the following possible courses of action should be explored. A, construction of a chairlift towards Pine Hill in the Cathedral Glen area and the cutting of two additional trails. The advantages of this course of action are one, it would provide three expert trails with an 1,800 foot vertical drop, instantly projecting Bel Air back to a competitive position with other ski areas in the Northeast. It would enable Pine Hill to advertise itself as a chairlift service Alpine ski village and set the stage for an economic comeback for this municipality. B, construction of a chairlift along the route currently served by the Upper T Bar, but extending to the top of Bel Air Ridge. The advantages of this course of action are one, it provides access to the right side of the mountain, currently requiring long walks. Two, this action is cost effective in that all trails, albeit non-snowmaking at present, which would have to be corrected, are already in existence. C, explore areas of year-round operation to provide activities for tourist participation. Attractions such as the railroad excursion in conjunction with summer activities at Bel Air State Park could be a large draw 
to attract and help tourists in the area for more than a drive through D, establish a Catskill Mountain Regional Development Authority to coordinate and foster ordered economic growth in the area with an eye to preserving the natural beauty with which the area has been endowed. These proposals should be financed by funds borrowed long-term by New York State. This long-term investment would result in a long-term economic improvement as well as increased state tax receipts from an area now struggling to emerge from years of economic depression. The Catskill region has had its glory era and its sorry area. The state can be set for return to the former. Now, by coincidence, in today's New York Times, in the letters to the editor, is a letter written by a person highly qualified to evaluate the Bel Air situation. This gentleman, his name is Harold B. Burton. He is a former commissioner of the Adirondacks Mountain Authority and headed the planning committee for the Bel Air, Whiteface, and Gore Mountain Ski Centers. And the heading of this article, of this letter, is Don't Take Bel Air from the Skiers. And here's what the article says. Since I co-authored the constitutional amendment authorizing the construction of the Bel Air Mountain Ski Center on Forest Preserve land in the Catskills, you can imagine my shock upon reading that Governor, Governor Cuomo has even considered closing that fine state park or leasing it unconstitutionally to a private concessionaire. Like Whiteface Mountain, whose civil amendment I personally authored, Bel Air exists as a service to the skiers of downstate and has repaid the state far more in profits since its opening in 1949 than it has lost during the past three snow poor years. It is, it is the only one of the state's three centers, the third being Gore, that has paid off virtually all capital costs of construction. This chintziness towards a fine winter park is all the more peculiar because the state government has never expected its summer parks to pay their way, and they don't. Would the governor close Jones Beach because it doesn't make a profit? Would he likewise close Bear Mountain Harriman Park up to Hudson? or the State Park in Niagara Falls, or the Taconic State Parkway, or the St. Lawrence River Ontario State Parks? Not likely. Nor is it likely he leased them out to a private concessionaire, if one were foolish enough to involve himself. If the legislature has been gener had been generous in providing snowmaking equipment for Bel Air, as it justifiably was in providing it for Whiteface, Bel Air would never have lost money. It would still be producing revenues for the state and return to the state its investment. Bel Air to correct a doubtless, Bel Air to correct a doubtlessly sincere error in your news story of February 4th was not initiated by local politicians or housing interests. It was initiated wholly by a sincere group of recreational skiers to fill the need that existed then and still exists. Thank you. Dr. Hollins, we thank you very much for delivering that testimony, and please uh, thank Joe. Well, Hollins, that is a very important issue, but there we have uh, specifically kept our statement to the purposes in the hearing notice. And uh, even though there are things that concern us that were said by the DEC representatives, we would like to stick with just the, the ski center itself and its operation as a ski center. We feel that the efforts by the local community and the representatives who service it in Albany um, have gotten the governor to change his mind and admit there was a mistake. But the thing that concerns us most greatly is that the future of Bel Air is considerably less secure today than it was a month ago before the governor introduced his budget proposal. Bel Air is a vital facility in this community and in this region. It was a catalyst to the development of the private ski industry of the Catskills and has become an integral part of the communities of Ulster County and of Delaware County. Not only does it provide jobs, but it provides a diversity of skiing opportunities for the local community and for the downstate skiers who come to these communities. Those skiers provide substantial revenue for businesses beyond just the ski area itself. And there are others within the community who will comment on the specific economics. The committee has posed a series of questions in its notice of hearing, and we have structured our hearing statement to respond to those specific questions. 
The first question was, should the Department of Environmental Conservation continue to ma manage and maintain the state-operated ski areas? And in the interest of ensuring that Bel Air remains open, we feel that the DEC should continue to maintain and operate the facility. However, we feel that the Legislative Commission on Expenditure Review, which audited the operations of Bel Air and Gore, have raised some significant questions about the DEC operation of its ski areas, and that those questions do need to be addressed and to be answered. The Commission raised the possibility of alternate operations for Bel Air, as well as for Gore. And we feel that there are a range of operational possibilities that should be explored, which include continued DEC operation, private operation, and possibly through the creation of a state authority. The state authority idea, as was mentioned by Senator Cook's representative, Mr. Mathis, today. We would like to suggest, if the state authority idea is considered, that a broader purpose be considered for such an authority. Specifically, we have in our midst a unique resource to the Catskills, the Catskill Mountain Railroad. Part of that railroad is now owned by Ulster County. Part is owned by an association of seven towns in Delaware and Schoharie counties. Those two separate ownerships are unified through the concept of the Catskill Gateway, which envisions facilities that start on the east side of the Hudson at the Rhinecliff train station, come through the central Catskills and extend as far as the west side of the Susquehanna at Cooperstown. We would suggest that a regional development authority with a mandate to implement the Catskill Gateway project as well as to operate the Bel Air Ski Center, would, which might also include more than just a winter season operation of the ski center as long as, as that operation were compatible with the forest preserve location of the ski center, would accomplish a major public benefit purpose and reinforce the four season economy of the central Catskills. Question number two asked, should the Olympic Regional Development Authority, also known as ORDA, be allowed to operate Gore Mountain and Bel Air? We believe very firmly that Bel Air should not be given over to ORDA. ORDA was specifically set up to serve the Adirondacks, and we doubt that given the existing problems of getting adequate state funding to a Catskill facility, that an agency set up to serve the Adirondacks would give adequate funding to a Catskills facility. The lines of communication are too long, and they are cross-purposes. As to the operation of Gore, there are some reasoned arguments as to why giving it over to ORDA might be considered, but we point out there are significant Article 14 restrictions that would determine how that ORDA operation would be fashioned. Any decision, however, on the transfer of Gore to Orta, we think should be subject to the same questions that we propose for Bel Air in, a, in the consideration of alternative operations. Specifically, is there a need for change, and what are the costs and benefits of making it? The third question is, relates to the constitutional limitations on state ski center operations in the Forest Preserve. The committee noted that the state cannot lease facilities, it cannot sell facilities, or exchange facilities in, that are forest preserved. Nor can those facilities be taken, that is appropriated, by any corporation, public or private. In addition, in the amendment that created Bel Air, trails are restricted to be no more than 30 to 80 feet wide, and their total length cannot exceed 20 miles. In plain talk, this means that Bel Air can be owned only by the state, and that should the state desire to have someone other than DEC operated, presuming that this is legally possible, it can only be done on a short-term basis. The problems of private operation under these conditions were better recognized by the Legislative Commission on Expenditure Review than they were by the governor and his budget staff. The commission saw the, that the possible private operation could probably only take place on a concession basis and understood the need for a ruling by the state's attorney general uh, on the constitutional issues. As yet, there has been no ruling on that from the attorney general. The essential point is that there exists substantial constitutional limitations that would affect the economics of private operation, as was proposed by the governor. The present Bel Air facilities cannot be leased or sold, and no long-term lease is possible which a private operator would need in order to write off the money needed to invest in the facility to bring it up to par. Under these conditions, either no private operator could be found for Bel Air, 
or an operator would take it on with no intention of making the necessary capital improvements, instead taking advantage of the millions of state taxpayer dollars already invested in the facility. And I believe it was Mr. Monroe who identified that investment is now being worth $13 million. The first option would result in the immediate closure of Bel Air. The second would lead to its degradation and eventual closure. Neither of those is an acceptable alternative. Question four, has the state created the economic distress at its own ski centers by poor budget practices, poor management, or a failure to provide adequate capital for competitive improvements? We're not going to comment on the quality of budget or management practices, but again we point that the Legislative Commission and Expenditure Review has raised significant questions in both of these areas. On the issue of the adequacy of capital investment, the figures speak for themselves. Bel Air has been starved while Gore and Whiteface have received a blessing of state budget riches. For the 10-year period 1973 to 83, the state invested $6.1 million at Gore and Whiteface, plus an additional $14.3 million for the 1980 Olympics at Lake Placid. For the same period, $2.7 million was invested at Bel Air, less than one half of the $6.5 million that had been requested for modernization and improvements. The major result of this fiscal starvation has been the lack of snowmaking capability at the ski slope that now is one quarter of the total length of, of slopes where the industry average in the Northeast is 83%. The fifth question is what are the local economic impacts and statewide impacts of closing Bel Air? Very simply stated, the closing of Bel Air would have a devastating local impact. There are businesses in these communities and the counties that surround the ski area that have grown up that depend on the business created by Bel Air. The owners of Cass Inn, the largest lodging facility between Kingston and Oneonta, have stated that they would have to close for the winter should Bel Air close, which would eliminate both jobs and overnight accommodations that are used by both the skiers who visit Bel Air as well as those who visit the private ski areas. Statewide, the impact would be that skiers who presently ski in the Catskills would go elsewhere, and we feel most likely that elsewhere would not be within the state of New York, but more probably in New England. Question six, should funding be restored in the DEC budget to operate Bel Air? In a one-word answer, yes. The specific issue of Bel Air's continued operation is of concern to us, but we have a greater concern over a broader issue. The people of the state of New York made a commitment to the Catskills when they voted to ratify amending Article 14 to create the Bel Air Ski Center. The state made an even larger commitment to the region 100 years ago when the Forest Preserve was created, a commitment reconfirmed with each subsequent purchase of state land that now includes over one quarter of a million acres of forest preserve. By several strokes of his budget pen, Governor Cuomo turned his and the state's back on that commitment. Not only did he propose to eliminate all state funding for Bel Air, but he also proposed to elim eliminate 50 of the primary state land stewards, the forest rangers. The latter cost-saving measure would leave the Catskills and the Adirondacks, as Assemblyman Hinchy has noted elsewhere, one ranger for every 92,000 acres of state land. That's hardly a creditable presence to oversee and protect this unique public resource. We are not trying to say that the state owes the Catskills a living. Rather, we're emphasizing that the state has an obligation to fulfill in the region. The Catskills Forest Preserve deserves a, serves a statewide purpose, helping to guarantee a pristine water supply for the New York metropolitan area and providing wilderness opportunities within an hour and a half drive of one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world. The land, however, does not take care of itself, nor does a ski center. That responsibility rests in only one place, with the state of New York. That responsibility is obviously understood by the governor with regard to the Adirondacks, at least judging by his originally proposed 1984-85 budget. For the care of land, $1.8 million is budgeted for the Adirondack Park Agency. For winter recreation, $3.5 million in state funds is earmarked for the Olympic Regional Development. In my capacity as executive director of the Earth Caskill Cultural Center, the Earp Center is a private nonprofit membership organization dedicated to the preservation and presentation of the region's art, history, and folk life. The organization advocates and fosters the protection of Catskill history, architecture, and folk heritage. The center and its programs also serve 
as one of the many links in the chain on the developing Ulster-Delaware Gateway Corridor. This string of economic revitalization and development is providing activities of cultural, recreational, and environmental quality and is interrelated and necessary to the continuing growth of the region's second home and tourist economy. I am here today to discuss my concern for the future of Bel Air Ski Center and its relation to the economic development and revitalization of the Catskill region. Bel Air is, a vital, is vital to the winter time, time tourist economy of Ulster and Delaware counties and to the region's development as a four season tourist and recreation area. It attracts skiers to the area providing revenue and visitors to businesses in the central Catskills. For many visitors, Bel Air is the first introduction to the region, is their first introduction to the region, and is their reason to return to ski and visit other areas in the Catskills. Bel Air's existence brings millions of dollars into the region's economy. With regard to Bel Air, the center believes the ski center should be managed, maintained, and operated by DEC, at least until it is safe from being closed. Questions were raised, however, by the Legislative Commission on Expenditure Review, which must be addressed concerning the operation, management, and maintenance of the facility by DEC. The DEC must review its own performance to date with respect to the operation of Bel Air and must take steps to rectify its management, maintenance, and investment shortcomings. Also, alternatives to management of Bel Air should be explored within the context of Article 14 of the State Constitution. If the DEC can no longer manage the facility properly, private operation or a state authority should be explored to oversee the Bel Air operation. The IRF Center has an interest in seeing the development of a state authority to operate Bel Air, and like the Catskill Center, suggests this authority be given a broader purpose to assist the economic revitalization and development of the rail corridor through Ulster and Delaware counties. The center believes a regional development authority could be modeled after the successful Main Street revitalization and rural conservation program of the National Trust. Basically, the, region, the regional authority would function to raise and administer funds to assist private development along the railroad Main Street running through the Catskills. As to whether Bel Air should be operated by the Olympic Regional Development Authority, the center believes it, would, it should not be run by ORDA. As evidenced by reports through the years, Bel Air has gotten a short shift in terms of the state's investment in the facility. The stepchild syndrome exists between Bel Air and its relatives in the Adirondacks. Under order, ORDA, the state neglect and underinvestment would continue. If Bel Air, however, should be transferred to ORDA, or to a separate authority, the transfer should be scrutinized on a business basis. Management and cost-effective measures should be addressed, and constitutional questions should be resolved. The center also believes this, the state has created its own problems at Bel Air. Certainly, Bel Air has been neglected for investment in gore and whiteface. In every case in the last five years, the budget has been divided unequally between the three ski facilities. Bel Air has received the lesser share of budget monies, attention to capital improvement, and management. If one looks at Bel Air's five-year plan developed by the state in 1979, it is clear the state has ignored its own advice. Of particular significance is that Bel Air requested funding for snowmaking through that, throughout that period, and yet the state never allocated monies for those projects. In five years, Bel Air requested $6,867,700, but only received $1,564,000 for a chairlift, for a well, 
for bathroom facilities, for repaving its roads, and for water lines and hydrants for snowmaking on one trail. Bel Air is the stepchild to Gore and Whiteface. It has been neglected by the state for the upgrading of Adirondack ski facilities and has now been abused through the budgetary process for not making money because of DEC's poor management. As to, local, as to economic impacts, locally, the closing of Bel Air would be devastating. The village of Fleischmann's alone would lose 73 jobs. The Farbers and Boxers, owners of Cass Inn in Margaretville, have stated they would close in the winter, and Ulster County projects a loss of over $3 million in local revenues should Bel Air close. Beyond that, Bel Air's closing would impact every business on the entire Gateway Corridor from Kingston to Delhi. This area is in the midst of economic revitalization. Businesses, nonprofits, government, and individuals have begun working for the economic benefit, betterment of the region. The state, by closing Bel Air, would only put a monkey wrench in this effort. It would add to the nightmare of the region's economic depression, not complement its dream of revitalization through second home development and, revital and a revitalized tourist economy. Statewide, there would be significant impacts. Downstate skiers would have one less day trip ski facility available to them. Sales tax revenues to the state would be diminished. And while other Catskill ski areas might absorb some of Bel Air's constituency, the more obvious solution for the skiers is to travel to New England, which is better advertised and better known for the ski, to the skiing populace. As to whether funding should be restored in the DEC budget to operate <coughs> Bel Air, you bet. Yes, the state created an obligation to maintain and operate Bel Air for the public benefit through its amendment to Article 14. It cannot renege on its commitment. The constitutional process set the stage for Bel Air. The governor and the state are obligated to upholding the mandate set forth in the Constitution. Beyond the issue of Bel Air, though, is the larger issue of the state's commitment and responsibility to the Catskills, a region which is readily access accessible to one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world. This incredibly rich area of cultural, re recreational, and environmental quality has too long been pushed aside by the state. Millions of dollars have been spent in the Adirondacks at the expense of the Catskills. The governor and the legislature alike have ignored the Catskills for urban concerns and Adirondack needs. It is time they focus attention on the Catskill region and its people. Thank you. Phyllis, thank you very much. Do you have copies? Do you have copies? Do you have copies in the statement? Uh, I did a lot of editing. <laughs> I sent you a copy. Okay, please. Ray Rominger, Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. I've been asked by those groups to speak to you a little about the economic impact of Bel Air on our area. When it was thought that the governor would exclude Bel Air from funding in this year's budget, the Fleischmann's Chamber of Commerce conducted a, an informal um, economic impact survey on the village. And uh, what we discovered was that about 90% of our winter business is based on um, the continuance of, of the ski center. And that um, virtually every one of our motels and um, the restaurants in the village would uh, be seriously in peril if, if anything should happen to Bel Air. Um, this represents about 73 jobs together with uh, constructing second homes for, for Bel Air ski centers, uh, uh, for people who ski at Bel Air ski center. The construction industry would um, 
be seriously uh, set back. The people who service the second home development with fuel oil and services of this nature, automotive services, <coughs> groceries, liquor, all of these businesses would suffer. Um, I would like to give you a brochure from Delaware County. I would like to call your attention to the uh, insert in that brochure, the list of accommodations. For all of Delaware County, you will see that the highest concentration of lodging facilities is right around the village of, of Fleischmann's. Delaware, the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce, as the official tourism promotion agency for the county, has been attempting to enhance the viability of our um, tourism industry. And we, we've had some noticeable success in the last several years. Um, our tourist industry is now estimated by the uh, New York State Department of Commerce as with an a uh, bringing an annual amount of money into the county of around 30 or 31 million dollars. With the construction and successful running of the Delaware and Ulster Rail Ride in Arkville, we've been able to the we've been able to see a substantial increase in our summer business. Where are these people going to stay that come here for this uh, marvelous attra attraction which is uh, underway? Basically, they have to stay in the, uh, in the Fleischmann's area because that's where the accommodations are. The conversations I've had with the motel owners and Fleischmann's have indicated that they can't survive on a year-round basis with only their summer business. It's absolutely essential to have that, that winter business in order to survive. Another point I would like to make is that the, the uh, economy of Fleischmann's is solely dependent on tourism. At about 30 years ago, we had um, 50, 40 to 50 working dairy farms right around the village. Now we have five. Um, the, the grand hotel industry that had, had uh, caused the village to prosper in the past due to changing styles and the, um, and, uh, the changing styles of vacation, this, this industry has uh, gone by the boards. So we're, we're solely dependent on tourism in our part of, of Delaware County. Um, we, cannot, um, we cannot exist without that winter business brought about by Bel Air. On the other hand, because of the, the snowmaking capability at, at Bel Air, we've not been able to prosper either. So, we would, uh, we would plead with the, uh, the Assembly and the, the Senate and the, the people in charge of the future of Bel Air that they find uh, an alternative for the, for the way in which um, business has been conducted here so that the, uh, the business community around here can prosper. Another point I think that should be made is that, it's my personal opinion, there's been a, a sea change in public attitude about um, public supported skiing facilities. I think probably when Bel Air was, was constructed, it was seen as a, a, a great benefit to uh, the downstate skiers who had no close facility. But now I think a lot of people view it as unfair competition for the private ski, ski centers on whose business we uh, also depend. I think that covers just about all the points I wanted to make. I urge the state of New York to reinstate sufficient funds to the state budget 
to provide for the continuous operation of the Bel Air Ski Center, either by the state directly or by an authority or by private concession. The Village of Fleischmann's is a resort community, and the continuous operation of the Bel Air Ski Center is vital to the economy of our village and surrounding area. There are several motels, restaurants, rooming houses, stores, service industries in our village that depend on Bel Air Ski Center for a large part of their business. They also have several skiers that own second homes in Fleischmann's. This all contributes greatly to our tax base. I cannot overemphasize the importance of the Bel Air Ski Center to our village. It would be a major disaster for us were it to be closed. Thank you for your consideration. Mr. Mayor, we thank you very much. I'm Heinz Pasternak, President of the Fleischmann Chamber of Commerce. Recent events concerning the funding of Bellier Ski Center have awakened people to the impact such a move would have on the welfare of the local population and the quality of their life in general. It is a known fact that most of the area farms have disappeared and second homes have taken their place. The majority of second homeowners are avid skiers. Pelea, a short ride from the metropolitan area, is a prime tourist attraction. The small private ski center operators depend on Belair for their survival as do the hotel, motel, restaurant, and service businesses. To close or insufficiently fund this state facility will cause unemployment to skyrocket, increase the welfare rolls alarmingly, force sales of homes and thereby increase the tax burden on the remaining population, many of whom are senior citizens on fixed incomes. Even if human suffering could be disregarded, in the long run, state and local revenues will be greatly affected. Therefore, on behalf of the Fleischmann's Chamber of Commerce, I urge increased funding with a view to eventual expansion in the future to a year-round recreational park. It is our opinion that the Olympic Development Authority should be allowed to operate Belair Ski Center in hope that a satisfactory solution may be achieved. I thank you. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Jane M. Langer, Western Catskills Community Revitalization Council. Assemblyman Coombe, I appreciate the opportunity to testify this afternoon. <clears throat> Before I start with my prepared statement, I'd like to point out that while the forest ranger issue isn't really part of this formal hearing process, I'd like to um, supplement what Tom Miner indicated earlier and question how much thought and effort went into that budget cut and whether or not the people who recommended it were aware of the search and rescue responsibilities of the forest rangers. And I would really question whether one lost child or one drowned fisherman or one person who dies at the bottom of a gorge is worth the budget cut. <coughs> Western Catskills Community Revitalization Council is a not-for-profit community and economic development organization serving a seven-town area, which includes the town of Middletown, Delaware County. The ski industry is the key factor in the economic rejuvenation of the entire southwestern Catskills region. People from the metropolitan area, originally drawn to the, ski, to the region to ski Bel Air and Hunter Mountain, the two best known ski areas, have purchased second homes which are used on a year-round basis. Non-resident owned parcels now outnumber permanent resident owned parcels in Delaware County. And that fact, by the way, supports Mr. Monroe's statement that, um, in fact, season tickets are becoming a thing of the past because as more and more ski, ski centers grow and ski snowmaking gets better at the private-owned facilities, people are less interested in buying a season's pass because they've got five or six areas that they can go in and out of. Because the ski industry has resulted in the establishment of a large, upper-middle-income, second-home-owner population in our region, the region is beginning to enjoy an economic prosperity similar to what was experienced at the turn of the 20th century. 
The difference is that ski areas, not large hotels, are bringing in the tourist. The difference is extremely significant because the second homeowners contribute directly to the tax base of the area and inject their disposable income into our local economy on a year-round rather than seasonal basis. Equally important is the fact that, of course, not all skiers build second homes. The skiers who drive up for a day or a weekend trip contribute significantly to the success of restaurants, antique shops, service stations, and convenience stores located in the Route 28 corridor. The village of Fleischmann's is beginning an ambitious, and I might add state-funded, Main Street revitalization program, similar to projects already underway in Margaretville and Arkville. Fleischmann's is the village closest to Bel Air. And if the merchants of Fleischmann's cannot be sure that future operation of the ski center is not at least equal to the present operation, then there is no justification for reinvestment on Main Street Fleischmann's. Our agency is not involved with Ulster County communities, but I would dare guess reinvestment in commercial properties in the upper section of Ulster County would be equally difficult to justify. The Bel Air ski area <clears throat> has been the catalyst for the recovery of our tourism-based economy. To close Bel Air now would be an economic tragedy for the communities along Route 28. The state of New York developed the take a body that looks like this and make it look like this or even this but we can help at the center we have everything you'll need to get in any shape you want personalized programs based on cardiovascular to expand trails charge to the Bel Air budget by the way mm -hmm. we must question whether Bel Air would not in fact be profitable if only legitimate operational expenses were being charged to its budget and if it were being operated in a manner similar to a private sector facility. Western Catskills would like to go on record as encouraging not only continued and improved state operation of Bel Air, but also its expansion. Bel Air is ideally set up to serve And we welcome the opportunity to participate further in the decision making. Honorable Mr. Hinchy, Honorable Mr. Coombe, and the rest of this economic development, uh, economic uh, <laughs> environmental conservation committee. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate my statement. I'm just going to say that why are we here? The reason that we're here is none of us elected officials and some of us that are private individuals have not done our job here in regard to Bel Air. I, as an elected official and vice chairman of the Economic Development of Ulster County, take the responsibility myself in saying that I did not do my job. I feel that Mr. Cook in his office in Albany did not do his job. Mr. Hinchy, and you're as chairman of this committee in Albany, you didn't do your job. We've taken this facility for granted for many, many years. We cannot take it for granted any longer. I, being involved in this coalition to keep Bel Air open, from September and October and December of this year, long before the governor made his address, we, were, we were, had some knowledge that there were some so-called uh, rumblings that the governor is going to cut back the budget here at Bel Air. We, uh, you say you didn't know. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. So you're really irrelevant. But we as part of this coalition, we as this coalition, to keep Bel Air open and, and expand this business committee, uh, business, business community, are not going to hear or, or take any no's anymore. We are going to stand on our ground. We are going to come forward. We want money. We want development here in Bel Air. We want development in this Pine Hill community. We want development in the Fleshman's community. And that's all I have to say today. Thank you.
Vincent Dunn. Oh, we had Vincent Dunn, I guess. Herb. Herb Heckler. I have a prepared statement which you all have. In the interest of brevity and the hour, I would just like to summarize a few points uh, regarding the economic Im impact of the, of the closing. Uh, first of all, tourism in Ulster <coughs> County. It may not be well known, but Ulster County has the third largest concentration of tourist facilities in New York State, uh, following only Manhattan Island and Sullivan County. Uh, we account for approximately 500,000 room nights annually. Uh, Ulster County's market area within a three-hour drive is 23 million persons. One of the most important aspects of this uh, and the success of our recreation industry has been the four-season vacation area theme. When there is snow, every motel in the Kingston Route 28 corridor is solidly booked with skiers. When there is no snow, uh, the motels and shops cannot survive. Why is Bel Air needed? Uh, because of the fame of Bel Air as the first state to develop ski centers, other small ski areas in the, in the Route 28 corridor have exposure to people from northern New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, Long Island, etc. Bel Air is a magnet, similar to a named department store in a shopping center, and should be recognized as such. The State Legislative Commission on Expenditure Review has criticized Bel Air for a number of reasons uh, that it loses money, etc. We need not rehash that, but uh, simply going through the report and reviewing some of the figures in there, we come to a very different conclusion. If we look at the last five years in operations, the total loss over this 35, over this uh, five-year period was only $34,890. For this $35,000 over five years, let's look at the other side, not simply the amount of revenues directly attributable to this, but also uh, what the spin-out has also been, uh, that the state has gained. Using the 81-82 ski season as a base, Bel Air attracted 82,000 visitors. This is from the state report. According to the survey cited in the state report, 27% of the visitors came from New Jersey and another 40% from New York City and Long Island, or 67% of the total visitation resided, of visitors resided in communities generally beyond a day visitor range. This is confirmed on page 53, where 51.2% of these skiers surveyed stayed for two or more nights. This is very, very important because the economic spin-out to our community, to our recreation industry, which we're discussing, uh, is radically different between a day tripper, which only spends another $2 for every dollar in lift ticket sales, as opposed to $5 for other sales for goods and services if they stay overnight. Again, using the state's uh, own figures in their own report, uh, multiplying out the number of visitors by category, we see that the state sales tax revenues directly attributable uh, to Bel Air's operation uh, in 1982 were $125,000. If you again take this $35,000 loss over a three-year period, uh, extrapolate on these figures, which are incidentally very, very conservative. Uh, and this has been confirmed by Economic Research Associates, one of the foremost most pardon me, foremost marketing companies uh, in the United States. So that instead of a loss, the state has really gained over a half a million dollars in direct revenues uh, due to the operation of Bel Air. Uh, if we turn to the local community, and you can just drive and see for your own eyes, the village of Pine Hill and the town of Shandaken are economically depressed areas with no industry other than tourism. The per capita income in Pine Hill is only $4,987. The town of Shandaken is $5,700. Ulster County is $67. The state is $7,500. It's uh, approximately 35% less than the state average. And that is why it is so important that this facility be maintained. In addition, the town of Shandaken is a mountainous area. Over 60% of its land area is owned in the state forest preserve. One of the positive aspects of this has been that it has attracted 574 seasonal homes. This is from the census of 1980, many of which are here because of the opportunity to ski at Bel Air. If Bel Air were closed, the town would not only lose the employment provided in restaurants, motels, gift shops, etc., but would also be great, have a greatly depressed real estate market. It is ironic that while the state spends millions of dollars in roads and other facilities to attract industry, 
It thinks of Bel Air only as an amusement area, which must break even in receipts to survive. Bel Air is part of the state's infrastructure. It is an important economic asset to the state and to this community, and therefore the Ulster County Planning Board and the chairman of the legislature uh, fully uh, concur in all the efforts that have been done to try to maintain uh, Bel Air. And we concur with the other remarks. This is perhaps an opportunity because we have looked at Bel Air as a place, this is where I learned how to ski. Uh, you thought it would always be here. And perhaps this is the opportunity to recognize how it, important it is to us and to turn around, put in the proper ski making equipment, put in the proper uh, equipment that the staff needs to go and groom these slopes properly and uh, fulfill its real destiny as a centerpiece of the Central Catskills. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And on behalf, on behalf of Charlie Cook and myself, just let me say that those of us who have labored in isolation on, beha on behalf of Bel Air over the years welcome all the newfound interest on the part of all the other people who now see such value and benefit in this facility. My name is Joan Lawrence, and I would like to voice my personal opinion on the future of Bel Air Mountain. My opinions are those developed as a resident, a skier, a business owner, and a taxpayer. Though I am an employee of Bel Air Mountain, I have also been employed by privately owned and operated ski centers, and my opinions are not to be construed in any way as the opinions of the State of New York the Department of Environmental Conservation, or the management of Bel Air Mountain. I testify as a taxpayer concerned about the future of this ski center. Has the state created the economic distress at its own ski centers by poor budget practices, poor management, or a failure to provide sufficient capital for competitive improvements? While the potential for closing Bel Air Mountain certainly causes economic distress, I do not believe any of the above can be singled out as the reason for that distress. Bel Air Mountain is subject to the same budget practices as every other entity which receives funding from the state. The state is a political entity. As such, it has the same problems with budgets which beset every other public funding agency in the United States. Funding can be obtained, denied, granted, gained, lost, allocated, appropriated, or expended through dozens of sources at many different levels of the bureaucracy in which all publicly funded operations must function. Numbers can be worked, reworked, labeled, and relabeled by anyone who picks up a pencil. In the final analysis, the numbers are all meaningless. We must stop. We must remember why we're here, what our goals are, and review how well we're meeting them. Can we do better? As I understand it, Bel Air Mountain is here to provide affordable recreation opportunity in as safe a manner as possible to allow the general, taxpaying, and skiing public use of the forest preserve lands they own, to enhance and assist private enterprise collectively in related business enterprises which will generate income and economic growth for the area, the region, and the state. Bel Air Mountain is here to meet a public demand. If this intent and purpose is not accurate, then the state should more clearly define its goals before proceeding on any action which will impact the future of Bel Air. However, assuming this definition is accurate, explains the important budget practice we are discussing. The budget practice is that self-supporting ski center operations are not required by legislation. There are two valid reasons for this fact. First, recreation-oriented businesses subsidized with public funding exist to complement, not to compete with, private enterprise. To demand self-supporting operation would place the state in direct competition with the private sector. Secondly, the constitutional limitations and budget restraints placed on state-owned facilities justifiably prevent develop 
development at the state-owned ski centers, which would result in self-supporting operations, regardless of who is running them. I firmly believe that both of the above stated facts are in the public interest and that no attempt to change either should be made.